Twice a year, in collaboration with the Brookings Institution, we publish the New Orleans Index to track the recovery of New Orleans and the metro area. Over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to brief you on the findings from our fourth anniversary special edition. Though New Orleans has been somewhat shielded from the recession due to substantial rebuilding activity, four years after Katrina, the region still faces major challenges due to blight, unaffordable housing, thin public transit services, and significant flood risk. New federal leadership must commit and sustain its partnership with state and local leaders and together move beyond disaster recovery to create a sustainable, inclusive, and prosperous city and region. These are the five trends you're going to see in the data I'm about to show you. The New Orleans economy is weathering the recession relatively well, yet New Orleans is not immune from the economic crisis. Ongoing rebuilding activities are attracting people, jobs, and investments. And new developments are also triggering population shifts between neighborhoods, but significant challenges still remain. About the New Orleans economy. The New Orleans Metro lost many jobs after Katrina, but through 2008 continued to regain jobs. Over the last year, while the nation lost 4.1% of all jobs, the New Orleans Metro shed only 0.9% of its jobs. Since June 2008, construction and manufacturing had the largest declines nationally, but lost relatively few jobs in the New Orleans Metro and represent a relatively small portion of the region's overall economy. Of those sectors with more than 50,000 jobs in the New Orleans region, only professional and business services suffered severe job losses. Leisure and hospitality lost less than 1% of all jobs, and trade and transportation and utilities is down only 1.2%. Education and health services and government added jobs in the last year. The unemployment rate in the New Orleans metro area surged to 7.3% in June 2009, up from 5.9% one month earlier. Nonetheless, this is lower than the U.S. rate, which reached 9.5% in June. At 7.3%, New Orleans had the 15th lowest unemployment rate of the nation's 100 largest metros, indicating how deeply the recession is affecting most other metropolitan areas. Yet New Orleans is not immune from the economic crisis. The market for single-family homes across the metro area stalled in 2009, with May sales volumes down 23% from one year earlier and down 39% from May of 2007. The slowdown in consumer spending is contributing to a decrease in city sales tax revenues, down 7% year-to-date compared to 2008. Ongoing rebuilding activities are attracting people, jobs, and investments. Over the last year, FEMA paid more than $800 million for infrastructure repairs in the five parishes, with nearly $2.5 billion more still forthcoming. Over the last year, 16 additional schools opened in the New Orleans area, and school renovations in New Orleans have been paired with aggressive public school reform. More than half of all public schools in New Orleans are now charter schools. The last police station operating out of a FEMA trailer was moved out of its trailer and into a new facility in the last year, and repairs to one functioning police station were completed. Repairs continue on three wind damaged but functioning police stations and two flooded police stations are still operating out of donated facilities. This past year, population growth picked up pace in the city of New Orleans, reaching 76.4% of pre-Katrina residences actively receiving mail, a 4.3 percentage point increase from last August. Across the metro area, population has reached nearly 90% of pre-Katrina levels. The recent surge in unemployment in the New Orleans metro is due to a large increase in the number of people seeking work in the New Orleans area. From May to June, the metro area labor force increased by 8,964, including more than 900 employed workers and more than 8,000 unemployed. This increase suggests that college graduates are seeking jobs locally, and new workers have arrived seeking job opportunities they're not finding elsewhere. Still, the number of available jobs is not keeping pace with the increase in job seekers, and the unemployment rate is trending sharply upward, now the highest it's been since 2005. New developments are also triggering shifts between neighborhoods. As you know, roughly 80% of New Orleans flooded when the levees failed in August 2005. This map depicts the density of households receiving mail in July 2005, just before Katrina with dark blue indicating densely populated areas and yellow indicating swampy areas. This is how New Orleans looked one year later in 2006, and one year later in 2007, and one year later in 2008. By June 2009, only nine neighborhoods have less than half of the active residential addresses they had before Katrina. They appear in yellow on this map. But three of these, B.W. Cooper, Florida, and St. Bernard, encompass public housing sites that have been demolished and are in the process of being redeveloped. 
And five neighborhoods with new developments, including single-family homes, apartments, and condo buildings, now have more active residential addresses than they did pre-Katrina. Although rebuilding homeowners have been a major driving force of repopulation, renters have also helped to repopulate New Orleans neighborhoods. But renters are more mobile, and as new homeownership and rental opportunities become available, this new housing is sparking moves across neighborhoods. Twelve neighborhoods lost more than 50 households in the last year. It will be important to monitor new vacancies and develop policies to address potential new blight from these population shifts. Significant challenges still remain, namely massive blight, unaffordable housing, thin public transit services, and significant flood risk. About blight, Orleans and St. Bernard parishes have very high numbers of vacant and blighted residences. As of March 2009, the share of unoccupied residential addresses in Orleans and St. Bernard at 31 and 53 percent respectively exceeds other cities also grappling with excess land and buildings. In absolute numbers, New Orleans has 65,888 unoccupied residential addresses, nearly as many as Detroit. In St. Bernard, 14,372 residences are unoccupied. Within New Orleans, blight is concentrated primarily in areas that flooded. Planning District 4 has the largest number of unoccupied addresses with more than 11,000. Some of these may be accounted for by three public housing projects that are being redeveloped in that planning district, but a large number are likely associated with blighted residences that were flooded by Katrina. Planning Districts 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 experienced extensive flooding and each has more than 5,000 unoccupied residential addresses. Even planning districts that experience limited flooding have a large number of unoccupied addresses. For example, planning districts two and three have large numbers of unoccupied residential addresses likely due in part to significant levels of pre-Katrina blight. Unaffordable housing. The New Orleans metro area has a significant housing affordability issue. While rents have increased 40 percent, wages have increased only 26 percent. Looking at the average wages for specific job categories, we see that workers in occupations with high labor shortages, such as food preparation, health care support, and retail sales, would have to spend more than 30 percent of their monthly income to rent even an efficiency apartment in the area. Thin public transit services. Average daily ridership on New Orleans buses and streetcars has grown, but despite significant population growth, ridership remains at only 43 percent of pre-Katrina because of very infrequent bus service in many parts of the city. Significant flood risk. The Army Corps has been authorized to build a levee system for the New Orleans area that will protect from storm surge associated with a 100-year storm. That's a storm that has a 1 percent chance of occurring in any given year. This system is scheduled to be complete in 2011. This map depicts the Army Corps' flood risk model based on construction completed as of June 2007. Dark blue indicates greater than 8 feet of flooding. These models indicate that as of June 2007, most of the New Orleans area faced the same risk of flooding from a major storm as it did before Katrina. When it's complete, this system will greatly reduce risk of deep flooding from a 1 percent storm, as you can see on this second map. But Katrina was stronger than a 1 percent storm. It was a 0.25 percent storm, or a 400-year storm. Hurricane Ike, with a 15 to 20-foot storm surge, was stronger as well. Army Corps flood models for a 500-year storm or a 0.2 percent storm indicate that this levee system will not provide sufficient protection against a storm of that strength, as you can see from the four to eight feet of flooding anticipated in many parts of town. Note that these last two maps only depict a small portion of New Orleans. The Army Corps has maps that demonstrate that this risk is present for the whole area. While the levee system will be improved when finished, additional protective measures such as water retention areas and home elevations will be necessary to protect the city from Katrina-strength storms. With strong partnerships, local leadership, and leveraged assets, New Orleans could emerge as a model of resilience for metro areas recovering from natural catastrophes or even major economic shocks. To accomplish this, local leadership must prioritize flood mitigation with improved stormwater management infrastructure and practices. State and local leaders could partner with Congress and the Obama administration to invest in green industries, including coastal restoration and protection, bolster ports, major transportation and freight corridors, and link school reform with neighborhood revitalization. And the Office of Gulf Coast Rebuilding must be extended beyond September 2009 and elevated within the White House to maximize interagency coordination. Thank you.